This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, miniatures, and paints, discount prices at miniaturemarket.com. Hey everybody, it's your old pal Rob. Uh, so there's a little story with this book here. Um, I got an email saying, hey, um, do you want to check this out? And uh, I got it from a company called Fervent Workshop dot uh, com uh, and I guess the designer uh, Chris he sent me an email when I replied and I said I wanted to check it out uh, the email came up invalid but I was fascinated by what lies beneath um, so I went to Amazon and I ordered it and I brought it in um, and he also has a bunch of other games which I was kind of interested in so what I want to talk to you about is what I think of this. Um, I, I, I've tried it out a bit, um, and I was really excited for this because I really like these type of uh, solo um, books. And this one here, for instance, um, it's kind of hard to go down and show you too much. Um, but what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going through encounters. For instance, here on, on, on page one, and I'm just going to dim this a little bit so you can, you can see a little bit here. Uh, you're going to read and, and there's a story to everything. And the story's pretty good. The art in it, I mean, I could take or leave. Um, uh, I just it, it doesn't do anything for me some of the rooms are nice it's just some of the people I, I, it, it just doesn't work for me now for other people I'm sure it does um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be taking and picking a particular uh, character and you're gonna roll two dice uh, two d6 because d6 are gonna be your thing in here and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to pick one so if I rolled a which I just rolled right now, a two and a five, I have a choice between a berserker, okay, and a warrior, which is perfect because I love that, uh, playing either one. I would choose uh, the berserker. Uh, your vigor is your health, okay, so I'm just going to show you here. Uh, wits, that's a whole different thing, dexterity, and you're going to have one for that, and then hits, how many hits you're going to do, which is two. Now, you're going to go through and you're going to read, and, and it's going to direct you to certain places, like for instance here, E2, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this right now. Uh, you stumble out of the crypt and immediately trip on your weak legs, sending a few skulls clattering into the darkness as you fall prone to the ground. Suddenly, a rat hisses into your face. On the page below, notice you have two options. The first, starting with hit at two offers you the opportunity to try hitting the rat. The rules for hitting the rat appear on the next page, which they do. They give you a little tutorial to go through. So I'm, I'm just going to go on with this so you get a good feel for this. If you exceed in hitting the rat, you gain one XP. If you fail, you lose one vigor, which is your health, as the rat gnaws on you for a little while. The second option starts starting with continue, simply directs you to proceed to the next encounter. When you see the list of options like this, proceed through them in order. So you have to fight the rat and then the continue is um, what you do. Each option is optional, except that if you reach the last option, then you must take that option. For example, you could try to hit the rat, succeed or fail, and then continue on the next option, proceed to E3. You don't have to hit the rat. You can just decide to skip that option, the, the first option, and go to the last. Well, no, you're going to want to hit it. So, for instance, I have a, a berserker, and he has two. So, what that means, hit at two is I'm going to, which means I need to roll higher than a two. So I would take my two D6, roll them, and I got a three and a four, okay? If you roll at least, if you, if at least one rolled die 
equals or exceeds the target's threshold, then you succeed, otherwise you fail. Seems pretty simple, right? So now you're really concentrating on the story. So what I'll get is, if in a success, I'll get one XP. If I fail, I'm going to lose one vigor. Well, I was fortunate enough to get one XP. Okay, then I would go to E3. All right, so it's an adventure book. Okay, here's the thing that kind of gets me and where it kind of threw me off on this game a little bit, okay, is dexterity tests. Dexterity tests, you would actually stack up your dice and you would flick a dice depending on certain things. And there's a lot of um, briefs. If, there's a lot of things that you have to go to the back of the book because everything, the iconography is all in the back here. So CP1, if you're just reading this for the first time, you don't know what CP1 is. So you have to go in the back and it means Crip Pass Key 1. This item enables you to unlock most padlocks. Now, the thing for me in this is I think the story's good. The art, uh, and as I've gone through it, the, um, the wit test and the dexterity test kind of become almost where, where it becomes a dexterity game and then almost a Yahtzee game with the with the wits. And you know, there's certain things that you have to have in order to change dice. You can roll them over, re-roll them. Uh, move them up one, move them down one. And while that's type of inter interesting, for an adventure, for a venture book, it's kind of, it, it throws me off. And I think to give this a fair shake, I'm going to do a live play of this next Wednesday. Uh, I don't know when this video will go up, but it should go up probably the Tuesday before the Wednesday. So tomorrow, basically. Uh, which which in all intents and purposes we will do a live play of this and you can get a feel for it because there's a lot of different things in here that that go on um having all these abbreviations kind of throws you off as well so i'm really kind of thrown off on this a little bit and right now you you know i i wanted to talk about it uh, you know I've gone through it a few times and every single time I get thrown off with the with with some of the things now to be fair in the back of the book there are alternative dexterity rules okay you may use the following rules instead of the standard rules at dexterity X succeed if dexterity plus ward minus karma okay when you face a dexterity test add your dexterity to your number of ward tags. You get ward tags um, um, as you go through the adventures, okay? And subtract your karma tags. If the result is greater than or equal to the level of dexterity test, you succeed. Okay, items and tags that aid dexterity text. Having an item BAM or RH, RMH each counts as a ward tag in calculation above. You may use item PFS as described in the arcane appendix to temporarily boost the dexterity. So you're thrown for a loop because now you're going back and forth having to find out what this, what these abbreviations are. Um, and, and, and you can see where I get, I get a little, not frustrated, um, just, you know, you're trying to immerse yourself into the adventure and you get pulled out of it with dexterity tests um, and, and, and things like that. Uh, 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 you know, your wit tests. So, you know, I'm on the fence with this one. Uh, I like to check out some of the other stuff that, that he's done. He's done Dungeon Maker Deluxe, uh, Cardiff, Fantasies and Futures, Accelerate Your Game of tap Tapestry, by uh, Stonemaier Games using fantasy, sci-fi, fantasy powers of parallel universe. Well, I, I like to check that out. So I might, I might uh, take a look at that. 
uh, in this draft uh, dungeon maker deluxe in this draft and write game you fortify your dungeon lair with minions and fantastic beats then fight your way through an opponent's dungeon for treasure and glory might be interesting um, if you have a, a, a solo thing in it um, again I'm on the fence with this one I think you wait until um, uh, I do the playthrough for you guys to make a decision on this. Again, uh, for me, the art is so-so. Um, and some of the rules are kind of really throwing me off. Uh, do I think it's a bad game? No, not at all. I don't think there's ever a bad game. But um, I don't know if this one's for me. We'll find out. We'll, you know, I'm going to play it a few more times, and then we're going to go live uh, on Wednesday and uh, give it a whirl. So there you have it. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can find this on Amazon or you can FreverentWorkshop.com. Uh, you can find it there. What Lies Beneath uh, from Chris Scaffoldi and art by, oh, Jason Glover. Sorry, Jason. Uh, there you go. So um, let me know what you think. Maybe some of you guys have played a lot more than I have. I've only played it maybe five times. Um, and uh, we'll take it from there. Until next time, it's your old pal Rob. We'll see you soon, everybody.